Yes, Raw on January 8th was from Portland, Oregon. And they're actually not only making Drew McIntyre interesting to me somehow, but they did an opening interview segment that within 15 minutes, I think it was under 15 minutes, three times as much as normal was said, and there was a f***ing point to it, and it got, got you interested in what might happen next. Imagine that. So already it's a, it's a new day, it's a new way, it's a new time, and they're talking good. But you're singing like sh as, Hey! As usual. I haven't seen any goddamn praise on your singing from the Lee Strasberg Academy or whoever it is up there in New York that teaches that kind of thing. Lee Strasberg, he's teaching singing now. Well, it, 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 from the it, grave, it, by the way, he could do everything else from the well, grave. He's teaching singing. He went to a whole new career. He went from acting to singing. Well, and, uh, <laughs> every time you hear, Ooh, that's Lee Strasberg. Well, let's talk about this segment and who uh, McIntyre had a problem with. Uh, he McIntyre came out and started cutting a promo and basically he cost himself the match. He didn't win the title last week. Maybe I've been holding myself back. Maybe I need to step away and get my shit straight. And he's milking it. But no, then I realized I didn't lose. Priest cashed in like an idiot. Remember, this is, we didn't watch last week because it was New Year's. What the fuck? But Priest cashed in and cost him the match and not only didn't win the title for himself, but he cost him the title. He screwed me. And now I'm standing back and I see Cody coming in, getting all this political pull and punk coming back and getting welcomed with open arms. Maybe I ought to leave for nine years and come back and get a hero's reception. And you'll never guess, Brian, what happened then. I saw the show. I don't have to guess. Oh, that's true. I and I'm afraid that. what's coming yeah. next. Like Mussolini, he's extra spicy. <laughs> because out came CM Punk, and he gets the chance, and etc. And that's what he said. We're in Piper Country. He told Drew he should have worn the kilt. They would have appreciated him. And he came out so that whatever Drew had to say, he could say to his face. And this worked. Because Punk got up on the turnbuckle and stretched out like a wise ass and go ahead, big mouth, you know, kind of thing. And McIntyre, congratulations, over a month and you're still here and you haven't melted down or self-destructed, but I know the real you. And he listed his grievances from when McIntyre was there before as a kid in need of a leader. And now he tells Punk, I'm your leader now, kid. And then he lets Punk vent his spleen or out of whatever internal organ and punk whereas drew is a little more heelish with his promo because that's the direction he's been going punk was a little more reasonable and level-headed guy i never called myself a leader i just was one and he put over what mcintyre had done and then he said i don't know what you're upset about because i'm kind of following you because I just like you followed me, I left to find myself or whatever, and then you left. Well, you came back, and now I'm following you. But then the fucking D, and this is the beauty of punk, is that you can take him any way you want to take him. He says, I'm not a demon. I'm Satan himself. I'm a nice guy it's time not to be. I'm not here to be a nice guy or make friends. I'm here to win the Royal Rumble and main event WrestleMania. And then you would have thought that would have been, no, Drew fires back up and he tells Punk off and it was halfway fucking good. Old Drew's got a little fucking bass in him now. And this time he's going to win the Royal Rumble and main event WrestleMania. With fans, because remember, he was in the uh, the empty arena mania. And it's going to be all for him. And then Punk said, well, before, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to lead before I knock your teeth down your throat, but only one person can stop me, and it's me, and I got out of my way a long time ago. 
And he mentions Drew and Seth and Cody. Nobody can stop me from winning the Rumble. But since I'm a nice guy, I'll throw you out last. And boom, and they're under 15 minutes. And that was a lot of shit. It was all good. You know what's going to happen now. You ever see the movie Commando? Who was in it? Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's his best movie. Oh, did he go Commando? I don't know what you have in mind by Commando, but Arnold Schwarzenegger has an issue with a group of paramilitaries who have kidnapped his daughter. And he threatens the one guy. He goes, you're funny. I'm going to kill you last. And then he killed him first. And, he, and the guy he said to him goes, you said you killed me last. He goes, I lied. And he kills him. Punk just said, I'll eliminate you last. Drew's going to be the first person eliminated by Punk. There you go. It has to be, right? Well, now that you've said that. Commando. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking about going out and watching that movie now just to find out how the rest of the Royal Rumble is going to turn out. You see that? And they wear pants in that movie. No one goes well, commando. No, that no. you can still... You're wearing pants when you're going commando. Well, that's true. That is true. That, you're, you're, not where, you're not just out there letting the polo ponies roam free. All right, but anyway, but, <laughs> but money-making promo here is what I'm trying to say to you. That's right. And if they can get... And a get, good film. Thank you. Siskel or Ebert? If they can get Drew McIntyre... Siebert. Up into Roman Reigns and L.A. Knight and Cody Rhodes and CM Punk and Randy Orton and fuck, and Gunther and uh, uh, stars, more stars than there are in the heavens. It is interesting though that, and we've seen a lot of this with AEW and even specifically with Punk stuff. And in a lot of ways, this was similar to some of those Punk segments, like Punk and Eddie Kingston, Punk and Adam Page before you know things went haywire. <laughs> In that, like, there was something going on, but at least here there was, like, a direction. Like, here's a shot. The next line's going to clearly be in kayfabe to bring us back to reality, or the reality of kayfabe. But with Punk, with Drew, you have a couple guys that you could see them getting cheers, you could see them getting boos. It's not, like, a clearly defined, he's a baby face. Until well, Punk I feuds with a heel, what is he? He's just a guy out there. He can be the devil. He can be Satan. I guess not the devil. Has AEW copyrighted the devil? Can you copyright think, the devil? I think God beat him to it. <laughs> he wrote the whole thing down. He said, I better trademark this shit because it's probably going to get over. But also, they refer to problems they may have had previously with a, in, in their various meetings when Punk was in the WWE before and Drew McIntyre was having his first run and personal problems they may have had that you would have to be a smart fan or a very tuned in fan to know the details of, but it doesn't sound out of place because at the same time, they're not beating us over the head with it like a stick where they, you don't believe that somebody hates the other motherfucker when in one sentence he blurts out, well, remember when you did this and then I said that and you did the other thing and you did that thing and I did the other thing. He's yeah, what the fuck? When you allude to some personal slight or transgression that the other person has made and you can kind of there's heat there i may need to find out more about this it sounds more legitimate right, right. so that's all i'm saying is that they sounded like two adults that had a fucking issue and you're right it is amazing how when punk gets in segments like this that's generally what happens good opening good opening to yeah. the show